Senator Amy Klobuchar joining us from the campaign trail across the state in Nashua, New Hampshire for a Fox News Sunday sit down. Senator, welcome back. Thanks, Chris. It's great to be on. Eight states now, eight states have passed tight new restrictions on abortion that pro life groups have been pushing. Uh, and as I say, dramatically restrict rights of uh, abortion. Alabama would ban abortions at any point except in, on matters of the extreme health of the woman. My question is, if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, when you become president, what will you do? If the Supreme Court overturns o Roe v. Wade, I would make sure uh, that we are codifying Roe v. Wade into law. But I think it's really important for the Fox News viewers to understand exactly what's happening here. Uh, these aren't nuances anymore. Uh, this is a case where the laws that they have passed in these states would actually make it so that no one could get an abortion. And at the same time, while we've reduced the number of abortions because of making contraception more available all over the country through Planned Parenthood and other ways, they've also moved to defund Planned Parenthood. Uh, so this is dangerous. Uh, it is a place that we have never seen. I think people have always warned that this could happen, and it's actually happened. And when I talk to people, whether they are pro-choice or they are personally opposed to abortion, a lot of them, Chris, don't think we should go this direction. Seventy-three percent of Americans don't want to overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, you have a situation here where they would actually put doctors in prison. 99 years. That's what the Alabama law says. Uh, this is a law that they passed uh, that would mean that if someone was raped, if a college student was raped, she wouldn't have a choice in that pregnancy from a rape. I don't think the majority of Americans are where the Republicans are on this issue right now. But, Senator, pro-life advocates are pushing back. There's a group called Restoration PAC, and they are now running an ad on Facebook that we're showing right now, uh, showing what it calls the party of death. Six Democratic senators running for president, including you, who have opposed restrictions in the later stages of pregnancy. You talk about the extreme, as you call it, on one side. Let me make the case, and you can answer it, on the other side, because... Uh, folks say that one of the concerns is that, that a number of Democratic senators are not willing to see restrictions on late-term abortions, abortions after 24 weeks as we enter the, the third trimester. Now, that's only 1 percent of all abortions in the country, but even 1 percent is 6,000 abortions after 24 weeks when a fetus might well be viable. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with the law. Chris. And what the law says is that in that third trimester, uh, it is allowed to protect the health and the life of the mother. But that's not what the president said, Chris. The president misled the American public. What he said at a rally was basically a doctor would be holding a baby and kill and kill that baby. That's illegal under the law. That is already a crime. I know this. I, but, I'm but a former for, prosecutor. Forgive me, Senator. That I'm, is a I'm crime. No, you, though, I think are you okay? I, no, but let me ask you, I understand the, the argument against infanticide, and that's an overstatement. What I'm asking you is, are you okay with abortions after 24 weeks? To protect the life and the health of the mother. That is exactly what the Supreme Court ruling says, and I am okay with that. But I just think it's really important, Chris, for your Fox viewers to know, because there's so much misinformation out there, that what these laws do is extreme. There are a number of Republicans who've said they are opposed to them. They are extreme. Then you have the president misleading the public and telling them that this is about basically killing a baby after a baby is born. That is not what this is about. That is a crime. So I think what people have to understand stand here is that we are at a point where a number, it is not just Alabama. This has happened in Ohio. This has happened in Missouri. Uh, this happened in Georgia. Right. There's a law that's being passed in Michigan that the Democratic governor is going to veto. This is happening across the country, and people need to know what's really going on here. This is a violation of civil rights. Uh, Attorney General Barr sat down with our Bill Hemmer earlier this week, and he said he could understand 
why President Trump has called the Russia probe a witch hunt, a hoax, because he says President Trump felt that he was falsely accused, and the Mueller report seemed to back him up. And then he also said that he intends to drill down on how the FBI and the intel agencies handled the probe. Here is the Attorney General. I thought when I came in uh, from the outside that uh, all the questions that I had and many other people had uh, that would be readily uh, answered uh, once I got in, but I haven't found that to be the case. Aren't there legitimate reasons to investigate the investigators, Senator? I don't think there are, and this really bothers me, because we have in front of us two things. One of them is to get to the truth of what happened here, and we're simply trying to get Director Mueller in front of us so we can find out. I remind you, this, this investigation was started under a Republican attorney general with a former Republican-appointed U.S. attorney, Rod Rosenstein, uh, with a Repu former Republican-appointed FBI director. That's where we were. They started the investigation because of legitimate news that there were people from the Trump campaign talking to others about Russia and exchanging information. We know that. Okay, the second thing, though, that is most disturbing to me is we have something right in front of us. The current FBI director and the current director of intelligence have told us that Russia is getting bolder, that what we've just seen was a dress rehearsal. And yet, any attempt that I've made with the Secure Elections Act, which is a bill I have with conservative Senator Lankford, that basically would say, let's get some backup paper ballots, let's get some audits in place, so we cannot allow a foreign power to invade our election again. They didn't do it with tanks or missiles. They did it with a cyber right. attack. They have stopped that in the tracks. The White House made calls to stop that bill, despite strong Republican support for the bill. So that is what's right in front of us. And Barr is off talking about whatever he wants to talk about politically. But what he should be doing is to protect the integrity of our elections and our democracy. As you know, New Hampshire, where we both are, although in different parts of the state, is among the, the five states with the highest rate of opioid-related deaths in the country, twice the national average. You have released a $100 billion, 10-year plan to deal with mental health and substance abuse. You know, they all sound roughly the same, uh, your, your prevention, treatment, recovery. So I guess I want to ask you, just focus on one thing, one thing that you think makes your plan dramatically different from all the other Democratic plans to deal with this problem. This is an issue that no presidential candidate has taken on, really, in history. And I would emphasize here the mental health aspect of it. One in five Americans have problems with mental health. For me, the mental health addiction issue uh, comes from my heart. My dad struggled with alcoholism uh, his whole life, had two DWIs and then a third uh, right before I got married. And at that point, in the 90s, he was facing either jail or treatment. He chose treatment, and in his words, he was pursued by grace. And I think every American has that right to be pursued by grace. And what I've done here is lay out a thorough plan so we have beds for people uh, who have extreme problems with mental illness, so that we have counselors for people to talk to. We've had a 30 percent increase in suicides, including farmers, including veterans, including students in this country in 15 years. And, Chris, the other thing that's unique about my plan is I show how I'm going to pay for it. I figure if you're running for president, you better be addressing real problems with real solutions and show how you're going to pay for it. I would pay for it by taking on the pharma companies that got a bunch of people addicted to begin with. And you can do it simply uh, with a fee, uh, per milligram fee, on the opiates that are being yes. sold. And then there's going to be a major master settlement with those companies that profited off of people's addictions, that got people hooked. And that's where you get the $100 billion. I got about three minutes left. I want to get to two more subjects with you. One of them is immigration. Okay. The president proposed a new, a new plan uh, this week that emphasizes merit, skills, education over family ties. Here's how the president described it. We discriminate against genius. We discriminate against brilliance. We won't anymore once we get this passed. Now, Canada and Australia have merit-based systems. Why shouldn't the U.S.? 
you know, you can do both. You can have some people coming in and that get degrees here on merit, but I think you also have to have people that maybe don't have uh, those degrees. And I'm talking here about we need workers right now in our fields, in our factories. Uh, we have openings in our nursing homes. Uh, we don't have enough labor in some of our states uh, for those kinds of jobs as well. And so what bothers me about the president's plan uh, is the fact that he doesn't deal with the dreamers. He doesn't deal with the millions of people who came here with no fault of their own. He doesn't deal with the 10 million people that are here now, many of whom would like to see if they follow the law, learn English, they want to be on a path to citizenship. And a lot of our Republican colleagues, people like right. Mike Rounds of South Dakota, Johnny Isaacson of Georgia, they joined with Democrats to take this on. And so I feel like the president has carved out one niche here instead of dealing with the overall comprehensive immigration issue. That, as president, that's what I would do. Senator, I, I want to talk a little 2020 politics in the time we have left. And I want to put up the real clear politics average of the latest polls. Uh, in Iowa, uh, you're in eighth place with 3% support. And here in New Hampshire, you're also in eighth place with 1.5% percent support. I, I understand that it's very early. Uh, we're still months away from people voting here in New Hampshire. I guess the question I have, though, is why do you think that you have not gained as much traction so far in the campaign as other candidates? For instance, Mayor Pete, who's going to be here for the town hall this evening. Oh, Chris, I think uh, being in the top 10 in a 25-person race when you're from the middle of a country uh, in a state that's not so big as some of my colleagues, I think that's pretty good. And I wouldn't count me out. Uh, everything I've done in my life, whether it's taking on 48-hour hospital stay for new moms and their babies when people didn't think I could get that done, I got it done. Or when I was the first woman to run for DA in my state of the biggest county, I got it done, and the next time I ran, no one even ran against me. Then I go run for U.S. Senate, running against a congressman, and win big time. I am someone that takes on challenges and finds a way to get there. No one thought I could raise money when I was running for Senate. I finally just called everyone I knew in my life, and I raised an all-time Senate record, $17,000 from ex-boyfriends. And as my husband has pointed out, it's not an expanding base. I will find a way to win. No one thought a peanut farmer from Georgia was going to win. Jimmy Carter's pointed out to me that he had less support at this point than I do. No one thought a guy Senator named Barack Club Obama could become president. This, this is, Senator you know Klobuchar, politics, we're, we're, Chris. We're, we're, it is a long road. Oh, I, I, it's forever. Listen, I, but it is a snapshot of where we are at this point. I'm certainly not counting you out. That's why you're here for the Fox News Sunday sit-down. Thank you. Thanks for taking time for the Thank campaign you. trail. Always good to talk with you.